Y'all is Tony Playboy. All right, let's get into the fly route for this week. Carson Wentz. He is on the market. We know that for sure. At this point, it's a question of when, not if, he is going to be traded. You know, the big names, the insiders, Schefter, Rappaport, they have said that they thought this could happen even this week earlier. Things are starting to slow down a little bit because Philly reportedly wants a Matt Stafford-like deal for Carson Wentz. They're talking two first-round picks. A lot of rumors are flying up. Right now, people are saying the Bears and the Colts are the two most likely teams. Odds have them at Bears at plus 100, Colts at plus 150. And I just have to say, my God, if the Chicago Bears trade for Carson Wentz and give up two first round picks, I will not watch another Bears game. At least for two seasons. <laughs> kind of makes me want them to do it now. <laughs> at least for two seasons. If we give up two first round picks, I will not. Actually, how about this? I will not watch another Bears game until Ryan Pace is fucking fired. This is a protest. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. This is a fucking protest. <laughs> if we give up two first round picks for him, I would not watch another game until he is fired. But. Right now, there's a pretty strong deadline people know of. March 19th. March 19th is that deadline. At that point, they have to give him a $10 million roster bonus. So they definitely will be off of him by then. So I have to ask you, DeMarcus, what is the fly route for Carson Wentz? So before I get too deep into the fly route, I do want to come back to earlier in the fall when I did tell you Carson Wentz was the problem. Carson Wentz would eventually have to go and that he was not going to be the quarterback in Philadelphia. I'll say that. But this is a pretty peculiar situation because no matter what the Philadelphia Eagles do, they'll be losing a lot even just to get rid of Carson Wentz. The cap hit will be big and um, it's going to totally change all the draft capital they put into getting him because they moved up in the draft again. This is the same situation with the Rams and Goff. They, I believe, packaged three picks to move up to number one to get him and then gave up more picks to essentially unload him. Um, in this case, the Eagles will at least hopefully get picks back, but that de- depends on where and who they trade him for. If they trade him to a team without a quarterback like we think, either the Bears or the Colts, um, they're likely to get back lots of picks, but not necessarily a big-name player. But I'm hearing that if he goes to the Bears, we're going to send back Nick Foles. Because you can't restart that dynamic. Oh, no, you absolutely <laughs> cannot. That's, that is the root of Wentz's problems in Philadelphia was he's having his MVP level season. He gets hurt in December. Foles comes in, looks a little wobbly in December, but then playoffs come and Foles flips the switch. Philly magic. And goes on, beats Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Locker room loves him. He's a kind of hometown hero. And then... Circumstances. They build a statue to him. Like, they literally seriously. have a statue. But circumstances happen that he gets shipped out, goes to Jacksonville, and then ends up in Chicago. And so from that point on, the, the locker room has had l- little faith in Wentz whatsoever for different reasons. Some people felt that he was too close to some of the front office. Other people felt that he was not accountable or that he would be a little harsh with teammates and practice or in the locker room, et cetera. So he's had his problems. And so he needs to go to a team where he can have a fresh start, where there are as few remnants of the Eagles there as possible. But he needs to go somewhere where a coach believes in him and thinks that he can get the best out of Carson Wentz again. The only place that fits that description that has the money to do so, the draft capital, the need is the Indianapolis Colts. So whose head coach is Frank Reich, who we know was the uh, offensive coordinator calling the plays when Carson Wentz had his almost MVP season. So he would be reunited with his head coach or his offense coordinator that year, who's now the head coach in Indy. Indy needs a quarterback. Their quarterback, Phillip Rivers of last year, just retired, and rightfully so. And their quarterback before that, or quarterback of the future, was Jacoby Brissett, and he's going to be set to hit the free agent market this offseason. So as of right now, the Colts don't really have a quarterback. They pick 20th in the draft. They have over $60 in draft or in cap room 
and they have draft capital. And so all the pieces are there for them to get Wentz. I think it'll be a good fit. It's a win-win for the Eagles to get back a couple first-round picks for him. They send him out of the conference so you don't have to see him, et cetera. It's a win-win for everybody involved. It's a win for Wentz. He gets reunited with his coach. And hopefully the, the Colts think they can make the playoffs again with a good team around Wentz. So I don't like the Colts, even though it makes like a lot of sense. And the reason why is because the issue with Carson Wentz is not his talent. The issue with Carson Wentz is clearly his ego. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Like, all the reports that came out of Philly this year really kind of reshaped the Carson Wentz narrative for me. And it's where I go from saying Carson Wentz is clearly still a talented quarterback he didn't have enough help on the Eagles, which I still believe to be true. And more so the system and the culture that was set in place around him and with his coaches was poor. And I don't want him anywhere near any people from that 2017, 2018 season at all. Because the issue is he did not like to be coached, right? You heard the reports from like the Philly Inquirer from Jeff Lane saying that like he would get a play and then he would just kill the play and audible for no reason because he just didn't like the play that Peterson was calling. So other people around him are no longer on the same page. You even go back to that 2017 year. People say he didn't like being coached hard by that staff. That's Frank Reich's staff. They were saying that in film sessions, they would point out errors that he would have and he would just make excuses and not take any of the constructive criticism that was given to him. Their veteran players from those teams would say, he doesn't understand that he has lost some games for us, and he will never admit that that's a problem, which means that he can never get it corrected. They would say he'd miss an open receiver, right? They would make a play call. The play would develop exactly how you want it to. Like, that's the worst thing as a coach. You put in the call, the play call goes exactly as you want to. You scheme the receiver open and Carson Wentz doesn't hit him. It's his first read. They're like, why? He goes, oh, that guy, I didn't see him open. My offensive line is not good enough. There was too much pressure. Always an excuse. And this is a consistent issue with him. They enabled it. He is comfortable with the coaches and on the Bears staff and on the Colts staff. And that's why I don't want him anywhere near those people. I want him in a situation in which he is uncomfortable, where he feels like he has to reprove himself to those people, not people who are like, we know he's good. We can, we know he's good. He was good with us. He walks in going, they know I'm good. They know the season that I had with them. They know who I am. And that's the exact attitude that put Carson Wentz where he is right now. So for me, the fly route is the team that is third at plus 800 in the odds for Carson Wentz, the Denver Broncos. I, the look on your face has me interested. What's up, Demarcus? It makes some sense. That was my gut instinct when I first thought about this. And I thought that having Frank Reich would not be a negative that it would be a positive because having him plus the combination of getting traded, being benched for by Jalen, uh, for Jalen Hurts, et cetera, would humble him a little bit to make him open or receptive to coaching. I think the Hurts plus getting a trade. So he, maybe it hasn't happened yet. I'm saying maybe it could happen. And with that coach kind of knowing what he can do as a, not as that he's talented, but that he knows what he's good at and knows what he's bad at and knows how to scheme for that that with the weapons in Indy and the offensive line and the defense, that they could still do well. Um, but please explain why you chose the Broncos. So I chose the Broncos because when you're thinking about things like having a good offensive line, having some weapons, et cetera, having a decent defense, the Broncos check all those marks, right? They have a bunch of really young position players like Noah Fant, Jerry, Jerry Judy, 
They have a decent offensive line. Von Miller comes back. Their defense is pretty good. They have a set of running backs, right? We talked about Melvin Gordon on previous episodes. Philip Lindsay is set to be a restricted free agent so they can keep him if they want him. Like they have all the tools to be a great team besides at quarterback. Drew Locke clearly is just not it, right? And trading for Carson Wentz makes him the most talented quarterback to be in Denver since Peyton Manning. Yeah, by far. Right? They have a good staff. It's a new GM. That new GM probably wants to bring in a guy that he's picked. And no team wants to give two first-round picks for Carson Wentz. But I think if the Broncos come with the ninth pick in this draft, can Philly say no? They certainly need the help. Like, think about it. The Bears and the Colts are the other two options. Their first round picks are significantly worse this year. And there are teams that look like their first round pick the year after that won't be good either. Because they're good teams. Deep, like Fundamentally at their core, quarterback's an issue, but they're good teams. Exactly. So I feel like if they offer you the ninth, how do you say no? Well, I think they could probably get maybe... Of this year's ninth and then maybe two seconds, maybe this year and next year, and that is close enough for them that they say yes. I would hope the Broncos were a little bit more savvy than that. Because well, right now the reason why things are held up is because other teams are not giving Philly the packages that they want. So I think you come through with the ninth and be like, look, I hear words out on the street is you ain't getting shit better than this. Be honest. Yeah. When was the last time you picked that highly in the draft? Well, when you drafted Wentz. Exactly. Uh, only thing complicating that, in my opinion, is there's a new GM in uh, Denver. John Elway is stepping away from day-to-day GM operations and is more of the president role. I don't know if he'll have any say in that deal. If he does, I think they will be more savvy and roll up with a little bit more swagger and say, take the ninth pick and give us Wentz and let's have it. Let's all part ways and be happy. So that's that's it for me right now. I think mm-hmm. that it's a great situation. It's a similar situation. It's basically B-side Colts in my opinion. That's fair. B-side Colts, but it puts him with a new staff that can help him garner the talent if he has it, but does not have that same familiarity with him and puts him in a place where it's kind of do or die. All right, let's just hope that if he goes to Denver, he throws some fly routes in that thin air up in Mal High. Now, I like that. I like that. Throw some fly routes. I see you. <laughs> now, while we're on the fly route segment, I just want to talk about how Philly this offseason has taken the exact opposite of the fly route. You fire your Super Bowl winning head coach because him and Carson Wentz can't get along. Well, the other story was that the GM met with him at the end of the season. They were like, the GM and president are like, here are our plans for the future of the team. And Dougie P just fundamentally disagreed with them. And so after a couple days of thinking about it, they were like, you disagree and the quarterback thing, you got to go. I heard that he wanted more input. Oh, yeah, on the future of the team. Yeah, Yeah. he's like, I should have a little bit more control. They wanted to pick his staff again, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he was just like, that's not really how I want to do this. Him and Wentz aren't getting along. So they swap out. They're like, all right, look, Wentz is the quarterback for us. Y'all can't. It's irreconcilable. He's leaked enough to say that. We'll choose him. And then Wentz is like, nah, bro, I still need to get the fuck up out of here because his locker room don't want him. <laughs> so that is true. Like apparently there were some reports also from Jeff Lane, Philly Inquirer, that a an senior offensive lineman went up to Roseman leadership and was like, you have to bench this dude. Put Hurts in. The team visibly and physically looks, they're like all their emotions, their body language, et cetera, is better with Hertz than Wentz. And a lot of that is rumored to be because Wentz is uncoachable. He'll kill a play, which means everybody else on the field that has the play that was called is now also fucking scrambling. Mm -hmm. 
You can't win games like that. And ultimately, those guys care about winning. And so Wentz is going to have to need to reset and reset his ego to do that. Agreed. That was your fly route. 